my final and uh, great honor is to introduce uh, our speaker for today, who is Judge Donna Stroud. Judge Stroud was born in, in Kenston in Lenore County, but wisely came, uh, came west, uh, graduated at the top of her class at Campbell College, now Campbell University. I guess it was Campbell University there then, I apologize. Um, and then went on to graduate at the top of her class at uh, Campbell Law School. She uh, was a, a paragon of the Wake County Bar as a practicing lawyer for, for many years here and a, a proud member of the Wake County Bar Association. Um, she is now a uh, sitting member of the North Carolina Court of Appeals. She uh, recently got uh, an LLM from, uh, from Duke Law School, so she has a little dark blue to go with her orange. And uh, so uh, we are really blessed to have a spectacular practitioner and jurist to speak to us on the occasion of your admission to the bar. So congratulations. Good afternoon, everyone, and I thank you, Mark, for that introduction. I second everything he said, by the way, about I mean about the bar and all of the involvement and the ethics and you taking advantage of, of what the bar has to offer you. Um, but you know, first, I just want to say, you know, congratulations. This is an exciting day for you. I always think of swearing in as sort of being similar to your wedding or you know other big momentous events where you're, you're coming to um, make a formal oath. And uh, it, it's exciting and a little bit scary, uh, but it's very important. And, and I just congratulate you. I'm certainly not the first person to congratulate you and I won't be the last, but I'm really honored uh, to have the opportunity to do it. And you've already accomplished a lot. You made it into college, because remember when you were worried about that, and then you made it through college, because you were worried about that. And then you made it into law school, and you made it through law school, and you're worried about all that, and you made it through the bar exam. And so here you are. And some of you have done other amazing things even other than law school. Uh, you may have families uh, and children that you took care of during law school. Uh, some of you may have had other careers before law school. Uh, some of you may have had military service uh, before law school, and so you have accomplished uh, some amazing things already. And some of you have some very definite ideas about what you want to do with your law degree, and some of you are still wondering uh, what you're going to do with it. But one of the great things about a law degree is there's so many different options of things you can do, and there's so many problems in our society today that you are uniquely situated to help address, and so you've got an exciting time ahead of you in doing that. So today, you're gonna to take an oath, and we don't do that that often. It's a, it's a very solemn undertaking. So I looked it up in Black's Law Dictionary because I'm a judge and I like to look up things like that, and uh, I found out that there's a lot of different kinds of oaths, okay? Black's Law Dictionary actually lists 17 different kinds. Uh, I did not know there were that many different kinds. So the one that you're going to take today, they call a promissory oath. And they define that as an oath which binds the party to observe a certain course of conduct or to fulfill certain duties in the future or to demean himself thereafter in a stated manner with reference to specified object or obligations. Wow. So that, that's what you're going to do today, take a promissory oath. And you may be worried about, you know, doing the right thing and not making mistakes. So, so what I want to talk to you about is, you know, don't worry about that. You're, you're going to make mistakes. You've already made some. You're going to make more. Uh, do your best and learn from those. So when I was thinking about, you know, what to talk to you about today, I, that's sort of, I was thinking about mistakes. Um, I can assure you that I had no idea when I was in your position now, getting ready to be sworn in to the bar, uh, that I would be a judge one day. I certainly had no idea that I would be a judge on the Court of Appeals. I decided I wanted to be a lawyer when I was in about third grade. I don't know why. I didn't know any lawyers. None of my family hadn't met one. Don't really know where I got it. But as it turned out, I really enjoyed law school. And when I graduated, I wanted to get into a courtroom as quickly as I could. And in fact, I, I, with the firm that I went with, I did that. I was actually in a jury trial in Superior Court just a couple blocks from here when I got my bar exam results. 
And we were a little bit stressed that day during the trial because I was waiting for my bar exam results and the judge's son was in my class, was also waiting for his bar exam results. So we were fortunately both happy that day. We got good news. And then I ended up doing an appeal for that case at the Court of Appeals and arguing it. So I, I certainly had the opportunity to get into court very quickly. And I got some great experience practicing law for 16 years, and that prepared me well to be a judge. And I was a judge on the district court here in Wake County and then on the Court of Appeals. But when I was thinking about you know, the mistakes that we make along the way, um, I wanted to tell you about some of those so that maybe you can avoid some of them, because it's always nice to you know, know about them maybe and avoid them. So I asked my sons and my husband you know, if they could help me come up with a list of my mistakes that I've made along the way. And uh, they were very helpful. Um, but I, you know, I told them I only have about 10 minutes. So I'm not really going to be able to use uh, too many of theirs. Um, but I do have some, some suggestions of some things that uh, I, learned, I did wrong and, and hopefully learned from when I was a new lawyer. Now the first one, and I promise you I did not coordinate um, with Mark on this, but the first one is get involved in the Bar Association or other professional organizations. When I was a new lawyer, I did not do that that much. We were members of the Bar Association, and of course I got my CLE, uh, we, you know, we paid our dues, but I was not involved in a lot of the other things that the Bar Association did in my early years as a lawyer. And it wasn't totally my fault. The firm that I was with just didn't really promote that, uh, didn't necessarily see that, I guess, as a worthwhile investment. And uh, I think they were wrong on that. Um, I was a new lawyer. I didn't know any better at the time, but I learned. And the Wake County Bar Association, North Carolina Bar Association, none of them asked me or paid me to say that, uh, but it really is worth it. You can learn so much from the other lawyers. You will make friends. Uh, you know, just beyond the, the continuing legal education you get, it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity. It benefits you in many ways. You can be involved with your profession and your community. And of course, as you've heard, it's free to start with and rates are lower for new lawyers. So, you know, take advantage of those opportunities right away. No need to wait. The second thing that I didn't do very well early in my career is, you know, take care of yourself. Um, you know, as a new lawyer, I didn't do a very good job of that. Just physically, emotionally, spiritually, take care of yourself. Law students and new lawyers tend to work really long hours. You drink too much coffee. You don't get enough sleep. Uh, you might eat some of the wrong things. You don't have time to exercise. Maybe some of that sounds familiar to you. Uh, in your, or maybe you were able to take care of all that during law school. I was, I was not doing a really good job of that. Um, and you can get by with a lot of that when you're young, but it will catch up with you over time. And um, so, you know, just think about those things now as you're younger and starting out, or even if you're doing this as a second career, it's, it's always a good thing to keep in mind. You know, take care of your physical and spiritual health. Uh, take care of your, you know, be thoughtful about your diet. You know, make sure you get enough sleep. Just all those basic things that your mother told you, you know, they're, they're actually true. Um, you know, fortunately, I learned that lesson, you know, by the time I was about 40 and I sort of started to improve things and, um, you know, now I even have a treadmill desk at work in my office so I can keep moving since being a judge is the most sedentary job known to man. Um, yeah, I mean, you could be, you can not even walk and you can easily be a judge. But uh, I feel so much better now uh, than I did 25 years ago when I was, you know, about your some of your ages, so um, so you know, go ahead and don't don't make that mistake. Another thing, don't live in an echo chamber. Um, when I was growing up, uh, we had three channels on TV, and we had one newspaper in our town, and everybody watched the news and read the newspaper, and that's where we got our information. There's not a lot of diversity of opinion or information available to us. Now, you certainly don't have that situation. Uh, nowadays, we have so many different sources of information. We have thousands of things available to us on the internet and all sorts of things. You're not limited to a particular newspaper or TV channel or anything like that. But instead of taking advantage of that diversity of opinion out there, I think the thing we tend to do nowadays is we limit our options, because there are so many. And we pick those that reinforce our own beliefs and opinions. 
I mean, your phone and your computer will even help you do that. It will suggest to you, you may be interested in this because you're interested in that. Um, and it's very easy to sort of build your own little bubble that you're in of the things that you read about and uh, the things that you expose yourself to. But as a judge, I've learned that there are definitely two sides to every story, and sometimes there's three or four, maybe more. Um, don't limit yourself based upon your own opinions and beliefs and the things you think now. Take advantage of all that diversity out there. Make it a point to read the things that you don't agree with. And you might not agree with them, but you will learn something when you do that, because you can learn something from almost anyone. The fourth thing, trust but verify. And when I say trust but verify, I'm, uh, your clients uh, is one thing you need to trust but verify. When you're a new lawyer, you're very enthusiastic and you're excited about helping people, and so you, your client comes to you and they tell you about their situation that they have, and it's very sad, and you know that as a new lawyer, you can help them. You know exactly what to do. But before you file that complaint or you take some other legal action, be careful. Uh, make sure you verify as much as you can uh, what your client's telling you. You have a professional obligation as an officer of the court not to accept everything your client says as automatically true and correct. In fact, your client may not even know that something that he's telling you is not true or correct. But you're helping him and his case and your reputation by doing your investigation before you take any legal action. The another thing is asking questions. Don't ever be afraid to ask questions. There are no wrong questions. There's only wrong answers. So you, you don't have to worry about asking a wrong question. And there's a lot of people that you can ask questions when you're starting out in your practice. If you're in a firm you've, or you already have a job, you've got people right there to ask. But if you don't, seek out those mentors. Seek out other people. Other lawyers are almost always happy to help you if you have questions. And there's a lot of other people who can help you too, so don't forget about them. The courthouse staff, people in the clerk's office, people that are on staff and administrative agencies that you may work with, uh, talk to those people. They know exactly what's going on there. They can give you a lot of really practical advice, and they are extremely helpful. So make sure that you talk to those people as well, uh, and that you maintain a good relationship with those people, because they can be extremely helpful to you. Um, in so many different ways. So those are some of the things that, that I learned from the, the hard way uh, in my early years. And you know, you've already made some mistakes, but here you are. And you're going to make more mistakes, um, of course, as you go out there. Theodore Roosevelt said, the only, man, the only man who never makes a mistake is the man who never does anything. And I don't think that's exactly correct because the man who never does anything is making a mistake by not doing anything. So, so he's doing it too. I continue to discover new mistakes every day. I try to learn from them. And the important thing is to keep on learning in general, keep learning from your mistakes. So congratulations to you. I wish you mistakes that you will learn from and much success. <laughs>